It doesn't really matter if you're playing a chord melody arrangement by yourself or if you're playing in a band, it's very practical to be able to play really a strong, great sounding intro to a piece, just really preparing the listener or the rest of the band for what's coming. In this video, I'm going to go over 10 different intros. I'm going to use different progressions, but I'm also going to show you a lot of different techniques that you can use for creating melodies and arpeggiate the chords in different ways. And the last few progressions are a little bit less common, but they sound great and they're some of my favorites. My name is Jens Larsen, Learn jazz, make music. The turnaround is of course extremely common, but that doesn't mean that you can't do beautiful things with it. And it is extremely simple and extremely clear, which is of course very useful for an intro. This progression is really simple, so it's just a 3-6-2-5 and then a 1-6-2-5. Uh, the only thing that's changed is that I have an A7, so a secondary dominant to D minor instead of a 6 chord. Uh, I think the most characteristic thing about this intro is that I'm using this way of arpeggiating the chords so that's a little bit different. So this is the first verse in the... E minor 11, but I'm not just playing the voicing, I'm really playing it uh, sort of two strings at a time to get this sort of bell like sound out of it. So moving to A7. Then the same idea, kind of creating a motif because we have the same kind of sound on the D minor. And then moving to a G7, 13 flat 9, so sort of a diminished scale sound. And then another diminished voicing. Moving back to C major 7. So this is a C major 7 with a 6 and a 9. And here I'm moving the inner voices B and D, so the 9 and the 7th, down to the 6 and the root, so. And then a melody in the A7. The melody is an F on D minor, and then we get another sort of second voice moving under that, which is D, C sharp, C down to the G7 chord. Then the melody returns the top note, so. G7 flat 13, resolving to C major 7. Even though this is a fairly common intro, then I think if more people knew it and also understood the chord progression, then we would have a lot more knowledge on tonal harmony because essentially this is a four bar progression that sums up pretty much everything you're going to come across in tonal harmony, except maybe one thing. So for that reason alone, this is worth checking out, but it also is a great intro. So we're starting on an F sharp half diminished or so a sharp four half diminished, moving to a four minor, which is a minor six chord, so F minor six. And this resolves to a tonic chord, so there's an E minor. Moving to another sharp four, which is a sharp four diminished chord in inversion, so there's an E flat, in this case with a flat six. Moving to D minor seven, so a two chord, and another minor subdominant, that's an, the Neapolitan subdominant, so a D flat major seven, resolving to the tonic chord. And the way this is all tied together is through the melody. You can actually play this, or variations on this, so that you have the C in the melody all the time. That's another option. But for this one, I just wanted a little bit more of an interesting melody. So I'm playing first. And then I'm turning that into a motif, so. And then on the D minor, just to take things really and get them to move towards the, the tonic chord, then I'm first playing the D minor chord. And then we have this line, which is just really moving down through the chords. Setting us up for the C major 7.
when you're in major, you can borrow chords from the minor key and that works really well. It's also often called modal interchange. And it's just a great way to get some really different sounds that still fit and move well in the progressions that you're playing. So this example can actually double as both an intro and also as a turnaround because the intro really, really resembles a very standard ending of a song where you just have now two substitutions that's going to take you back to the beginning. The progression in this example is really simple because it's of course just a 2 5 one so D minor to G7, going to the flat 6, so really just a chord borrowed straight out of minor, and then going to the Neapolitan subdominant, which is D flat major 7. Essentially that's just like an F minor triad with a flat 6 in the bass, so just an extra leading note. This example is really using a lot of sort of piano type sounds. So what I'm doing here is almost emulating uh, sort of several layers on a piano. So the first part is like the left hand playing a shell voicing. Then we get this harmonized line where I'm really just moving up, which would be sort of the other hand. So, and then again, lower register movement with the bass line. And then we get another harmonized melody. And then going to the A flat major 7, so here. I'm trying to just arpeggiate, so sort of again using intervals, but then just give this sound, because we want to have the sound of this chord, but we also want to have the movement still, so. To D flat, which is of course D flat major 7 sharp 11, and then resolve to C major 7. I have a few different examples of how you can use pedal points in this video. This first one is just a really clear way to just set up the key with the turnaround that I'm using and then still sort of create tension with that pedal point because you can hear that the pedal point is something that needs to resolve and when it does, that's when the song starts. So the progression here is really simple because it's just a 3, 6, 2, 5, so E minor to A7, again using a secondary dominant, like an A7 flat 9. Uh, and then D minor G7, and then we have the G pedal under it. And that's just really what creates the tension, what makes you hear that this is not something that's completely stable, it needs to resolve. Which is a great thing to have in an intro, of course, because once it resolves, then the song starts. Just a simple melody. Down to G7 here. And then we get really the same kind of melody, but just a slight variation with this higher note. And that's actually also just building a little bit more tension. And then the beginning of the resolution. And then we're starting the song. This is really a variation on the second example that I went over, so the one starting on the sharp four, but now everything is turned into minor two fives. And I think one of the reasons for that is that when we have all these minor two fives after each other, then they're pretty unstable. They really want to resolve, so everything is sort of driving forward, and that's a, of course a good thing for an intro. It makes it a little bit less clear, but uh, we're kind of solving that problem by going to the C major one bar before the song would start and then adding a G7 before that. And in a way, this intro is really just a variation of the intro to Round Midnight from Monk, which uses exactly this progression. So the progression here is first a minor 2, 5 to 3, so to E minor, so that's F sharp half diminished to B7, then a minor 2, 5 to 2, so E half diminished A7, and then a minor 2, 5 back to the, the key, so that's D half diminished to G7, resolving to C, and then I've added a G sus chord here, and then going to C major. So what's really working here is that it's the same progression just moved around. So I'm also using that in the melody. So it becomes sort of a motif with, with this part of it. And the, the same thing on the next one. 
And here the melody just stays, and then I just repeat the middle part of the chord. So that's just another way of keep th keeping things moving. Same motif, then down to another G7, because now I, I want to have a G7 also. Up to C major 7, G sus, and then C. Until now, the main focus has been on the chord progression that I'm using in the different examples, but you can also use the melody as sort of the, the main character. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm playing just a short riff and then repeating that. And that's what's being played at the beginning of the bar. And then in between, I'm playing the rest of the accompaniments and then I'm playing the chords in there. The chord progression here is pretty simple. It's just a variation of a turnaround. So first one chord, then this secondary diminished chord or secondary dominant diminished chord, which is C sharp diminished. That's just a, a substitute of the A7. Then D minor seven and then a G7 and that's repeated. So really what makes this work is the way that I'm playing it. So first we get a melodic statement that's and then in between we get these accents in the comping. Another melodic statement. And then a compliment. And then this last part on the G7 is kind of rounding off the sentence. That's repeated. So what you have here is that it's not like a walking bass or the bass is playing too. We only have these accents and then the melody in between. And that's what's really building this expectation, building a way of creating some tension towards starting the song. This is a variation on the basic turnaround that I started with, but I'm disguising that it's in C major and I'm doing this by starting on the B flat seven, which turns out to be a tritone dominant for, uh, for the A seven, that's a secondary dominant for D minor seven. So in that way, it's a little bit less clear what's going on and makes it a little bit more exciting and it moves along a little bit faster. And then finally, at the end, you can really hear that it's in C major. Here, the B flat seven is a tritone dominant for A seven. So that's the secondary dominant of D minor. And then we just get that 2-5. And then this is repeated. So B flat 7, A7, D minor, G7. And then we go to the beginning of the song, which is C major. And here I'm really exploring some different ways of using arpeggios, and especially uh, arpeggios that are harmonized in intervals. So I'm starting on this B flat 7. Then I'm introducing this arpeggio, which is essentially just a C major triad, but it's harmonized like this moving to A7. And here I'm also playing an arpeggio, but that's really just playing this chord voicing and then in string sets, moving to D minor seven. And then another arpeggio, which is just an A minor triad, which kind of becomes like an F major seven because I have the third under it here. So going to G7 flat 13. And then the next part is sort of tying the whole thing together and moving it along by repeating the same melody on top of the first three chords, so. And then moving to G7 altered to C major. The first example using a pedal point was using an entire turnaround as a chord progression. But of course, you can also make a simpler version of this that's just using the five chord and its suspension. But that's still a very practical and very clear way to really set up the key and set up the tempo. So first just playing the G7 sus4, just a shell voicing, a short melody, going to G13, back to the C sus repeating that melody so it becomes a motif or a riff. And then to mark that we're moving to the tonic chord, 
going to an alter dominant just to be really clear about it so and then resolving to C major 7 One of my favorite chord progressions is the Ladybird turnaround and that's because it's just taking a basic turnaround and then adding a little bit of giant steps and also at the same time getting some subdominant minor sounds in there that are really beautiful. A Ladybird turnaround is essentially tonic chord and then a secondary dominant to take us to the flat six and then the tritone dominant, so in this case D flat seven tritone of G7, resolving to, in this case, a C6. So here I'm first playing a C6-9, like this. First just playing the root and then using arpeggiation, which sounds really nice and open here because they're all fourth intervals. And then basic E flat 7 with a 13 out of 9. And then similar to what I did on the C major, I'm using arpeggiation and string sets. Now it's not all fourth intervals, but still. Moving to this D flat 7, 13, where I'm using this inner voice to take me down and resolve to first C6, moving up to a C major 7. One way to make an intro really powerful is to make the resolution, so the transition from the intro into the song, much more of an effect, much stronger. And you can do that by being a little bit misleading in the intro. Of course, you can decide for yourself how vague you want to be about it, but an easy way to do this is to say, if the song is in, for instance, major, then you can pretend that the entire intro is in minor or the other way around. So in this example, that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm playing a suspended G chord, so it's essentially just a pedal point on the dominant chord, but I'm taking a dominant and a dominant sound that's coming from minor, so I'm playing a G Phrygian chord, which is a G7 sus4 flat 9. And that's sort of the basic sound that I'm working with, and then once the song starts, or the final resolution, I'm actually going to a C major chord, and that just makes that much more effectful. And of course you can do it the other way around as well, you can pretend to be in major and then suddenly still resolve to minor. There is a Kurt Rosenwinkel trio uh, song where he does this, where he's playing a long intro in major and then resolves it to minor and plays the song in minor. The chord progression is pretty simple here because it's all just G Phrygian or G sus4 flat 9. So I'm first playing this, which is essentially just an A flat major 7 with a G in the bass. Moving up to this, you might recognize that as the top part of a D half diminished. So all the all that kind of sound, I'm just using different chords within that sound. This one as well, and then this one, which is also just a nice change with the flat 13 and the fifth on top. Then a bass mood movement, bass melody. And then this repeats, moving to a G7. Again, just moving to really a G7 altered to signal that now we're gonna move on. And then we get this C major seven. And here I'm adding the fifth down to the sharp 11. So of course, this kind of thing is uh, something you want to be a little bit careful with in the, part of the first part of the song, especially when you have this interval within the voicing. I actually think it sounds really nice, but uh, it's also the kind of thing that can get you fired really quickly. You can use all this material in your own chord melody playing, just take out both progressions or maybe some of the ways that I'm playing the chords. But if you want to check out more on how I approach playing and making chord melody arrangements and how I also work with chord solos, because those two things are really, really closely related, then check out this playlist where I'm covering sort of the basic skills that I pull from when I work with this.